In this video, I uh, will show you what the proof meeting macro is, how to install and set it up, and how to use it. Um, first of all, to install it, uh, click on the macro on the toolbar, click configure, find an empty spot on your list of macros. I already have it installed here on 16, but I'm going to show you down here one below. You highlight this row where you want the macro to go. In this box here you would type a name that would appear in the menu and then over here you click browse and browse your way to the macro file. And once you've selected the macro file hit OK and it will appear in this box like it does up here. And then hit update and then these the contents of these two boxes will appear up here. When you click OK, um, this new macro will now appear in your drop-down macro list. The last macro I have installed here actually is the proofreading macro, so it will appear right there. I also have it set up on my speed bar here, so that's the way I'm going to use it uh, right now. Okay, first of all, um, when you first set up the macro, uh, when you click on it for the first time, um, it's going to ask you to create a new profile. Um, this particular MDD that I have here um, doesn't have a profile associated with it yet. So if I click yes, it'll ask me for a profile name. Um, I'll just enter test. You can name it whatever you like. Once I hit OK, I come to a menu here where it's going to uh, allow me to, ch to set up all of the things that I want this proofreader to check for. Um, this here is the category. We have tooling settings, um, drilling and tapping and boring settings, which is basically all of your plunging operations, uh, milling settings, and turning settings. Um, and as this macro gets developed, um, there'll be more menu options added like surfacing um, possibly five axis and whatnot uh, right now I have four categories so if I go into tooling settings and I hit the edit button I come to a menu now where I tell the macro what things that I want to check for in this particular profile um, so if this particular machine doesn't normally use counterclockwise tools, then I can click to check for that. Um, this check here, uh, if the cutter compensation does not match the tool number, then I'll get a warning for that. Um, I can also click auto synchronize, and what that will do is that if it ever detects that they are not matching, it will automatically synchronize the cutter comp to the tool number. Um, this one here is basically the same thing, but with the length off the length offset, uh, there's an auto sync for that, um, and a couple for lathe, basically the same thing. If you're using tool ID rather than tool number, then these are basically the same thing, but instead of tool tile number, it'll be tool ID number uh, for cutter comp, length offset, and for lathe. Um, if this particular machine doesn't normally use tool IDs, um, you can warn if it happens to be on. If it always uses tool IDs, then you can warn if it's not on. Um, if you forget to enter a comment for the tool, you can warn for that. So I'm going to set those particular ones up. Um, I go back here. Now I can go to my next category, which would be the plunging. I can go and set, set those up. Um, now you can choose which ones of these you want to use. You don't have to use them all. Um, if you have an operation now that is drilling with a tap, you might want to warn for that. Uh, if you're tapping with a tool that's not a tapping tool, um, you can warn for that. Uh, if you have this machine doesn't use rigid tapping, you can warn for that. Or if you always want to use rigid tapping, you can put a warning on that if you have float tapping by accident, um, rigid tapping with a float tap, float tapping with a rigid tap. If you have operations that you've forgotten to turn the coolant on, 
Um, drilling operations where a very depth has been checked off by accident, you can check for that. Um, on your drilling dialogues, if you happen to have set your entry clearance plane below the drilling surface or below the drilling depth, you can put warnings in for that. Um, same thing goes for the exit clearing planes. After you're drilling at the exit, is below the drilling surface or the drilling depth you can warn for that if you use the absolute Z retract and if that happens to be below the exit clearing plane you can warn for that uh, these boxes here are for actual uh, spindle values um, minimum and maximum drilling RPMs if they get exceeded um, you can get warnings for that uh, float tapping rigid tapping uh, these next ones here are more for the actual drill, the uh, tooling dialog. If you have a drill depth that's deeper than what you have specified as the tool extension in your tool setup, you can have warnings for that. Flute length. Uh, if you're tapping deeper than what the tool is extended in your dialog, you can get a warning for that. Um, warn if you're a boring tool and not a boring cycle. Uh, next menu would be milling settings basically the same sort of things if your entry levels don't match your drilling depths milling rpms minimum maximum if you're going without coolant I won't turn that one on because a lot of times I do mill dry um, warn if you have uh, prefer subs uh, if you don't want that you can have a warning for that um, this particular machine doesn't have a tooling or turning uh, settings. If it was a mill turn machine, you could have milling and turning all uh, all set up. Uh, I'll just go briefly into that. Um, quite a lot of checks here. There's a lot of preferred canned uh, checks that you may or may not use. You can warn if it's on or warn if it's off for drilling, roughing, threading, um, coolant warnings, counterclockwise tool. Uh, a lot of times people will have counterclockwise tools in turning because under heavy roughing uh, the forces get directed towards the uh, the bed of the machine um, so it's not uncommon to have counterclockwise tools but you don't want to have them during threading and drilling usually so there's warnings for those um, uh, now okay so now once you have all your settings set up you can save this profile and now this profile is the only one listed for this MDD so it's the only one that's going to appear in this drop down list I can go and create a new profile and make another one um, if I have another profile I want that's almost identical to this but just a couple of changes I can hit copy profile and what that will do it'll ask me for the name of the, n the one to make a copy to and I'll call it say test 2 and hit OK now I have test and I have test 2. If I go into test 2 and hit edit, you'll see that all of those settings are still there and then I can I can go in and tweak a couple things. And now I have save and now I have test and test 2 with test 2 having just a few more. Um, obviously I showed you that to the edit button. If I want to delete a profile, I just basically highlight the one and hit delete. So these buttons here will manage your profiles. So once you have your selected profile and you have tools in your operation list, uh, operations in your operations list, uh, just hit run checks. Now it says, okay, it's checked four tools and it's checked 50 operations and everything passes the test. Uh, now, if I go into this tool here and set it for counterclockwise and then run the proofreader again, now you notice it comes straight to this menu because it, it found uh, profiles associated with this MDD, so um, it didn't have to ask me to create one. It already has found two of them. So now I can go run checks. This time around, I have a tool warning. I can hit view a report and it's going to tell me uh, tool number three is a counterclockwise tool. So there's my warning there. Um, if I come here, sure enough, I can change it to forward, run the check again, everything's good. Um, if I go back into that tool now, and let's say I change the tool length to four, or tool cutter crop to four, and tool length to say five. 
I'll run the check again. Now I have two tooling warnings. The report tells me tool 3 has a cutter compensation mismatch and length offset mismatch. And it tells me what they are. Um, if I run it again, you'll see that I still have the alarm. If I changed profiles to test 2, the things that I actually tweaked in this one was to auto uh, synchronize the tool number with the cutter comp and length offset. So if I run this one, I will see I have uh, four warnings. My original mismatch, plus it warns me that it has changed to match the tool number for both the cutter comp and the length. Now if I run this again, it should pass because these have now been changed to match the tool number. And this works just as well uh, if you use tool ID. So now this tool ID is 4. Now I have a mismatch here. If I go into Edit, Tooling, I'll turn these off. Oh, this is actually the test profile. Um, now I go to Tool ID. I turn on my warnings and my auto synchronize for Tool ID. Save the profile, and I run those checks. I have five warnings. I have a warning that tool number three has tool ID checked, and then I have my cutter compensation and uh, length offset warnings. If I run this again, because I had it to auto synchronize, I only have one warning. It has warned me that tool number three has tool ID checked. And for this machine, I don't normally use tool IDs. That's why I set that. That's why I set that warning. Warn if tool ID is used. And basically, that's how it works.